Welcome back, my name is Last No Meal, and today we have some exciting Cyberpunk 2077 news and updates to talk about. First off, we have the news about the new game plus being in the works, which basically means once you finish the game, you can freely start a new game that has all the loot, like weapons, armor, augmentations on you, but the level cap increases and enemies deal more damage. The Witcher 3 has a New Game Plus mode, which works in a way of you just becoming stronger in the end. You still have all the abilities, you just level up higher to get the same loot basically, but with higher stats, and enemies are higher level and deal more damage. For me, New Game Plus is always interesting to see if I can do the game in a different way with a new build, and for The Witcher 3, you focus a lot on the story and try to get a different ending, and the reason why I kinda go with a New Game Plus is because I like having higher stats and see how strong Geralt can actually become. Now, in Cyberpunk 2077, that is going to be a bit different because of the different classes and just ways you can play the game and finish it. Uh, how I see Cyberpunk New Game Plus uh, is basically me trying out a different class with different abilities. If I was a solo here, I will focus more on net running in New Game Plus, even though most of the gear I use is probably going to be for my other character, like a net runner build. And because we will, ha we will be able to change and adjust our abilities as we play, that won't be a huge problem. My concern about that is generally, does it matter? Some are probably just going to start a new game, which is not a plus walkthrough, but just having that in the game definitely increases the replayability, but even without it, I will gladly just create a new character on my second playthrough to experience the game in a different way, try to get something else than I did in my first one. Now, we also got a new screenshot from the game just recently showing the leader of the animals called Sasquatch. She is the boss of that group and in the new gameplay demo that is showing on PAX West and on Gamescom, but it is going to go live for everyone on PAX West, we will see the fight against her. Animals use steroids, which increases their strength, as you can see, she is using a big hammer that we have to get out of her hand. This screenshot is obviously showing full guns blazing playthrough, and it is interesting if she actually breaks the wall with a hammer and charges at us. One way to also defeat her is to cut the steroid supply, she will get weak enough to drop the hammer, which is a cool detail for your future playthrough. I honestly really dig this light machine gun, it shows us a glimpse of just what weapons we will have. Obviously they will be customizable, but from what I've been able to see, and I might be wrong, the weapon is called Magrail or something like that, but I doubt you will need a lot of ammo to take Sasquatch down if you are using this. I mean, come on, look at this weapon. Also, every single screenshot you see is using RTX, I suppose. So far it looks stunning, can't wait to see the updated gunplay in the new demo. In the other news, we had an article from Respawn First, where according to Marcin Blaka or Blasha, I, I'm sorry I can't pronounce your last name, I'm so bad with last names. The story director of Cyberpunk 2077, uh, basically the game is not an extension of our world in 2077, it's a vision of the future as Mike Pondsmith and the society in general expected to look like in the 80s. So he says this. A good example of this, however down to earth it may sound, is how we perceive the internet today. It's wireless, right? They didn't have that back in the day, so Cyberpunk 2077 is still mostly wired, full of dark subnets, and places you actually need physical access to jack in. Now look, this makes sense, of course it's not our world, it's an imaginary alternate reality, but there is no denying that some practices and elements are taken from this world. You look at all the big corporations of today and how they're becoming closer to what cyberpunk is describing. The future that was seen by William Gibson, uh, Philip K. Dick, uh, Masamune Shiro, Pat Cadigan and various others is sadly becoming a reality. Well, when I say sadly, I mean it's not becoming all sunshine and rainbows, you have mega corporations taking over but augmentations are always cool. And for the end we have a lot of small info and details from Marcin Evinsky and his new interview with Thai website called GameFever.co, all the links down below of course. So players will be able to use public vehicles but you won't be able to hack them. 
There will be a lot of mini games and hacking, but Cyberpunk 2077 won't feature game as deep and serious as Gwent. So the Afterlife game card won't be in 2077, it's only coming out physically, it's not going to be in the game. Marcin was also asked about other celebrities appearing in the game, he said I don't know and left. I mean, come on there Marcin, you do know, so... These are interesting news indeed, I wonder who else might appear in the game. Also, you will be able to finish the main story without doing any side quests or activities, but who would want to do that? He briefly discussed melee combat, as we know you have mantis blades, katanas, knives and gorilla arms that can be used to open doors, that depends on your character. Again, when it comes to multiplayer, they are working on it, but first and foremost they want to focus on single player game, which is the important part of 2077, and it will stay as it is. Every multiplayer aspect is probably going to be a separate game, and they won't sacrifice the single player title or the single player aspect of 2077 so they could cash out on the online mode. Also, Mike Pondsmith is going to have a role in 2077. He said for Xbox Magazine that he recorded for one role, then CDPR went with a different one. He said this. So, I'm in the game, I'm figuring out what happens if, you know, at some point uh, Johnny Silverhand is playing his guitar and I'll come out and play my bass. He said this with a laugh. So I am glad that Mike Pondsmith is coming to 2077 and honestly the man has such an amazing voice I would gladly listen to him narrating something. Also Cyberpunk Red is getting a card game called Friday Night Firefight which is a game of combat in the dark future. You have these fields and different attacks you can use also movement cards and defense cards so for all the fans out there these are great news. Also, it does seem that Cyberpunk 2077 is becoming a pen and paper RPG. It was confirmed by Mike Pondsmith in an interview with the Dark Future blog uh, that he is going to work on Cyberpunk 2077 pen and paper RPG. Definitely something all of you must check out. But hey, that is everything I have for today, there is quite a sum of news here, hopefully you learned something new. So don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button for more Cyberpunk 2077 news and join us on Discord and Twitter. We have an amazing community there for you to discuss various things including Cyberpunk. This is LKM signing out and as always, stay breathtaking everyone, bye bye.